Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a sculpting video and I'm going to go through the process of sculpting this Tibetan fox. I did a poll over on my Patreon and I put up a list of animals that I um, put over to my patrons to vote on and the Tibetan fox won. So I'm going to be making that doll um, and this is the little sculpting process. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using an aluminium foil ball for the kind of like a skull really but it's an armature and um, it sort of acts like the skull but um, with polymer clay you don't want it to be too thick because one it, it ends up not baking through and two it's just a lot of waste of polymer clay that you don't need to use so I use an aluminium ball um, skull for the armature. And for the polymer clay, I'm using Sculpey Original. It's the softer Sculpey. I personally like working with soft things. Uh, that's why I choose to go for the Sculpey Original, but you can get something like Super Sculpey and it is a little bit firmer. That's the beige colored one. Um, and uh, if you want to sculpt with something firmer. So basically I've covered the aluminum ball with the polymer clay and sort of roughed out a rough shape of the, of the head of the uh, Tibetan Fox. And I always have reference images up on my computer next to me on all different angles to make sure I'm getting the angling right and the symmetry right. Because uh, you always want reference images to make sure that you're sculpting something that you want it to look like. Uh, I found the Tibetan Fox a little difficult because if you've ever seen one, it is really odd and it looks like someone's bad drawing of a fox. So I found the Tibetan Fox to be a little odd because it doesn't really conform to a sort of normal face I guess so uh, basically what I'm doing is working on the snout area so I normally work on the snout areas when I sculpt things first uh, it's no right or wrong but that's just something that as a starting point for me and then I can um, sculpt around it so I basically roughed out a rough mouth area mouth snout area and then added a nose and started adding all the little details to the nose. So once I've added the nose, it's the first bit of uh, detailing that I add to the sculpture because uh, I find when I add the nose, it starts to sort of look like the animal that you're sculpting and then you can sort of work off the way that looks for me personally. Um, the little tools that I'm using are from the brand Sculpey and it comes in a set of three little ball to tools and the other ends are like a soft plastic, which I don't use at all. Uh, but the find the ball tool is really uh, helpful for doing little snout areas as you can see um, you can sort of round out the nostril area and then use your needle tool or the uh, pin tool to create uh, the little flap bits on the edge of the <laughs> nose um, and i find that that final little bit adds that a bit more realism to the nose And just again going ahead and adding some more detailing to the snout area. They have a really small snout compared to the rest of their head uh, and it is quite a lot lower than um, say a wolf or something or any other fox so uh, I had to redo the snout area. Um, again I actually ended up chopping it off and replacing it. For the eye area, I sort of hollow out a little well with my fingertips to begin with. i um, using glass eyes for this sculpture and they are quite a little eye. They're six millimeter, I think they were. Um, it could be three millimeter, I'm not sure. Uh, but they're hand painted. I painted them myself um, with a mixture of green and gold. I wanted that tiny little bit of sparkle to it. And basically I put down a little piece of clay and then I start positioning the um, cabochons to um, make sure they're all both symmetrical, pointing the right way and they're not um, sitting in the wrong positions. And you look at it for all different angles and make sure that um, that cabochon is sitting symmetrically. Otherwise you end up looking, you end up having a sculpt that looks a bit cockeyed, I should say. Um, so just look at your sculpture from all different angles and make sure those um, cabochons are symmetrical. Now, once I've placed them and I'm happy with the way it looks, I've referenced my images that I have on my computer. Um, and I'm happy in the, with the placement of them as well. I can start uh, working on the eyelids and the brow area. So I do this by basically sculpting different types of snakes, I guess. 
And I start off uh, just making a little tear duct with my um, rake tool that you can see here. And it doesn't have to be fancy because you can you can add and subtract it later on, but I just rough it out to begin with. And then I go ahead and start creating the eyelid areas first. So that again, with a small snake, I can uh, create those little eyelids. My style's changed a little bit um, in the last few years where I used to do a pronounced uh, waterline, but now I sort of do a more realistic waterline and eyelid area. So it's, it's really, um, so you can't, it's, it's a bit more realistic rather than what I was doing before, which was a really pronounced black outline. Um, I will still do that for my fantasy dolls, I think, but um, for the realistic ones, I've sort of changed my ways a little bit. And for the upper eyelid, again, I put on that snake and the upper eyelid is a bit more crucial to the expressions. So you just want to take the time and play around with the way your clay is sitting to make sure you've got the right expression. For the Tibetan Fox, I, they have a really uh, distinct eye eye positioning and eyelid position. So I really wanted to get that, um, that gaze correct and to really make sure it looks like a Tibetan Fox. So again, working on the other side of the eyelid. So I always do just do a rough eyelid first and then do the other side, make sure they both look symmetrical as well and they have the right amount of clay on both sides. Again, looking at it from all different angles to make sure everything is correct. So once I'm happy with that, I can start adding the brows above those um, eyelids. And the same deal, it's just a thicker snake that I'm putting over the top and sort of blending it into the actual head space, um, making sure that I have all of the, the creases and crevices correct. So I can go in with my needle tool and start adding all the little details that I wanna add. So where the crease from the eyelid to the brow is, I can start adding that into um, the sculpture. And I can start adding little fur details as well, just to sort of suss out what the eyes are gonna look like once all the details are there and sculpted. Again, it won't be your final fur sculpt. Um, you don't even need to sculpt fur, but I prefer to do it because I can I can see, I know it's a bit of a, a waste of time to sculpt the fur, but it, make, it makes it sort of like a more final product. And you can see uh, how the sculpture actually looks with all those details on it and to make sure I'm happy. So if I just left it like a messy sort of non-detailed um, piece, you can really miss any details and structure that looks a bit odd. So I prefer to sculpt those um, sculptures in. So I spent a lot of time just playing around with the proportions of the head. Um, so I sped this up quite a lot just to give you a little look at how much time I've spent just sculpting all the little proportions, taking it back, looking at my reference photos, adding little bits and pieces to different areas that need to be bulked up or need more um, more detailing to it. Um, so it, it's quite a lot of time that I spend just refining the way the face looks. All right, for the ears, and I think the ears really bring the sculpt together. Um, if you get the ears correct, I think it really brings the animal to life. So Tibetan fox ears are pretty simple. They're very much just like a ordinary fox ears. So I basically sculpted little ear pieces um, over my fingertip and sort of pinched the top end to make um, that little tip on the ears. And I made them a little bit bigger and then I trimmed off a, um, a, a small section to make it more conformed to the head. Um, and then sort of just blending them into the skull. They might look a little bit big, but when I add some more detail, fur detail, and also add the faux fur onto the head, um, that it'll all come together and look proportionate. So when you're adding faux fur to your art dolls, you always want to make sure that you're sculpting a little bit smaller than what it's going to be, the, fit, the final product is going to be, because the fur really bulks it out a little bit. And um, it's something that you will learn with um, experience when you're uh, making your art dolls. So once I'm happy with the ears, I start sculpting these little teeth that hang out of the Tibetan Fox. So I had a look at uh, quite a number of images and you can really see a little peak of the teeth 
sticking out of the bottom of the snout area. So I just uh, made these little teeth with some translucent Sculpey and that's what I normally use for um, sculpting teeth. Uh, anything that look like teeth or nails or something like that, it's um, translucent Sculpey. So I did a little bit more refining, added a little bit more to the sides to bulk out that fur area. And what I'm doing now is just doing some more refining with my little tool and um, just, just adding that little bit of detail. So again, like I said, you don't need to add any of the fur details if you're applying faux fur to the head. But for me, I think it helps with fur direction uh, and also the faux fur sticking on top of the head. And it was sort of at this point that I was looking around and I wasn't really 100% happy with the way the face looked. It tended to look really wolf-like rather than um, a Tibetan fox. So yeah, like I said before, I chopped off the snout, lowered it, and I think that really helped with the way it looked. I actually walked away from the sculpt and uh, came back the next day and I could really see what the problem was um, of it not looking like the fox rather than a wolf so yes you can see at the end here what um, what how much difference it made to the actual um, sculpture so that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed this a little sculpting video this fox will be up for grabs for my patrons first and then it will be released to the public uh, so keep an eye out. I will be doing another poll over on my Patreon as well for the next art doll and also working on that Fairy K dragon collection. So that'll be also up on my Patreon soon when I finish the collection. But you can follow my progress over on Instagram, Facebook at Creatures of Nat and also TikTok. You can also find my shop at CreaturesOfNat.com. And also thanks to my Patreon for supporting me. I really appreciate it. I have a new printable coming up soon. So check out my Patreon for all new tutorials, printables, early access and coupons. And uh, yeah, so I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.